to spend a few moments and talk to you about some lines from Johann Sebastian Bach's 65th Chorale of the 371 we have. Was got tot, das ist vollgeten. And I'm going to show you some relationships that come out of looking at the way his bass and alto parts sometimes move together. It's a really lovely sound, I think. I hope you'll find some value here. If you've not yet done so, please do subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. Like, share, and leave a comment. It's always good to hear from you. If you'd care to leave me a tip, my PayPal information's there in the description below. So here's some lines of my own and some lines from Johann Sebastian Bach. So this, I wanted to find a way to convey these relationships. So here's C, C, E. And what we're going to do is maintain this C. And it's as if we're going from root position to first inversion, but we're having a little station in between. scale but so I'm in the key of one sharp here this would also work in the key of no sharps no flats different kind of motion but we get to this first inversion all the same so we'll do the the key of G because it gives us some workout on the fingerboard here get to where you can see. So C, C, and E, three, five, five. Keeping that C in the middle, five, five, seven. And now seven, five, eight, E, C, G. So that's C in first inversion. So it's as if we're playing the four chord, the four chord, the five chord, and I'm putting that note to lead your ear to want to hear a resolution. So C passing first inversion up to 9, 7, 10. This is D over F sharp. And if we put the C there on the fourth string, 10th fret, we get a little D7. First inversion. And now G, the same as we had with C. Root, root, third, 10, 12, 12. And then same. Now we're using the other one that I showed you here if you wanted to, to stay in the key of C. So G, 10, 12, 12, 12, 12, 13, 14, 12, 15. This is G, first inversion, little passing chord. So these in themselves are great to know. I also want to show you if you wanted more of a barbershop or early Americana kind of ragtime. You get this kind of approach. This is way more barbershoppy. C, C, and E, three, five, and five. A little diminished chord here, the one diminished in first inversion. E flat, C, F sharp, widening out with a pedal point. C E, C, G, seven, five, eight. Very kind of Waltz of the Flowers, Tchaikovsky kind of sound. Look, we found ourselves to G. I did the, the approach diminished to G got up here. That is 9, 10, 8, 10, 12, 12. 
So back to Bach here, we're going to get to his part. Now this is straight from Cantata, or sorry, Chorale 65. So these are the motions I became interested in this morning. A wide C, G, E. It's a very Bachian voicing. Uh, the spacing is such that everybody has a lot of room. It's very open. You can imagine that in a church or a cathedral, these kinds of voicings would really ring out. So that's G, D, B. So I should have had this, sorry, to be in the key. That's how your, your ear will tell you when something's amiss. Otherwise, yeah, these are all... So a root, a fifth, and a third. Our five chord, first inversion, or you could consider it diminished, I suppose. Myself, so you find things. So from Bach. So two ways to go. C G E. And we get our approach diminished. C sharp G E. So this is eight eight ten eight eight twelve. Sorry, nine eight twelve. And then we're going to call us into D seven, D F sharp and A. 10, 11, 10, and this, that's where this came from, this idea of moving the alto and the bass at the same time. So we have D, F sharp, A, 10, 11, 10, then just those two voices are going to rise up. Often in a four-part chorale texture, I'm leaving out a voice. I don't, I'm sorry that I can't be exactly exact, but I don't want to learn arrangements of big four-part chorale chords. I want to get to the essence of them and have them be flexible and movable and usable in an improvisatory context rather than literally playing his chorale, which I, I guess if I had to do it, I'd want to learn it on keyboard so I could really, really get the texture that he wanted without compromise of line. So often in this style that I'm showing you here, say in the case of this this C doesn't get a chance to really go to B it's an illusion that the C goes to B but the B's up an octave so we get which can pass by the ear in an improvisation okay it's not good part writing on my part but I want to get that voice up there and I don't want a doubling and it gets into all kinds of problems. So I could have that, but it's up some doubling. There's just limitations on the guitar to rage, register, how close voices can be together, what has to get left out. We only have six strings and effectively four fingers. So we do our best. Now that's another option here before I get back to Bach, is once we go up the inversions to, from C to D, we could go G, and then F, G, C, 4, 5, 1, instead of, instead of staying in G and having a little passing moment, we could actually have G, F over A. I think you hear this with earlier composers than Bach too. Orlando Gibbons and John Dowlin and William Byrd. That kind of sound, it's a... Uh, it's a triumphal kind of sound. You can hear, imagine trumpets.
So here we have G, 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 B, 10, 12, 10, then F over A, 12, 10, 13, 14, 12, 15, and then we're going to go, instead of getting up here with our E soprano, we're going to get it here so we can do part of this chorale that I'm trying to get through. So we, we're here. So this in itself would be great to practice. D, F sharp, A, rising up G and E at 12 and 12. And I'm coming here to F sharp, A and D, 9, 10, 10. Could also very effectively go here, same voices, 14, 14, 15, but I wanted to try to keep it in, in the same position roughly so that I can visually associate it. If I don't want my melody to go way up and I'm wanting to stay down somewhere, say in the case of here, I could either go up or go that away. So D. And what he does in the chorale is D over F sharp, 9, 10, 10, and he lowers that G, sorry, that A to G. So from 10th to 8th fret. And then B minor in this open, it really reminds me of older music, pre-Bach. And a little B minor to E minor. This happens in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it must be after the repeats, the sixth bar of that chorale, number 65. I'll leave a link to it. So here's my little exercise. E minor, 7, 9, 8, 7, 7, 10, B minor. Seven, nine, eight. I hope this hasn't been too drawn out and that you're able to find something in it that you like. I really do like these sounds. Look at that, we found another way to use that little diminished approach. I hope you're finding things new and exciting that you're enjoying playing. I hope this channel can be a part of it. If you have watched this far, you're a trooper and I admire you. And I thank you very much for your kind attention and wish you as always a very good day.